Um, Sarah already knows this, but I am battling a three-day killer headache. And so um, I'm going to do a really quick, hey guys, love you guys. And I'm really excited to hear from Sarah. Um, I've known Sarah for quite a while and um, just always really enjoyed talking from her. And she has this really quiet, like really thoughtful presence about her. And so when, actually this is all Renee's fault. When Renee started <laughs> working with her, she just really talked about her own personal growth. And it's been really exciting to just watch Renee um, kind of become herself, if that makes any sense, and really just enjoy sharing with people, connecting with them, and loving who she is in the process. And so I know that Sarah has a big part to play in that. And so I am just excited because that kind of goes along with what you know we've been talking about is being real authentic honest raw and being okay with who you are and being able to connect with people on that level knowing that what you share and who you are isn't a mistake that there are so many other people who just like you have pain points and experiences that kind of level the playing field um, and so I'm, anyway, I'm blabbering on and on. I'm going to turn this really bright light off of my brain and <laughs> cause it feels like a drill is like, <sighs> and I am going to let Sarah do all of the talking tonight cause I want to maximize all of her time. So I thought I unmuted you, Sarah. Would you talk just to make, no, I didn't. Well, you did. And I did. There we go. Hi, can you guys hear me? Okay. Cool. Thanks so much for having me on, Renee and Lauren. Renee, I'm loving the hairdo. It's nice. It's very festive. It's very good. Um, so hi, guys. My name is Sarah. Um, and for those of you who have seen me speak or talk before, hello again. It's good to see you guys. Um, and for those of you that have never seen me or heard me or, you know, come across my path, my my name is Sarah Try, T-R-Y, like the actual word, Try. Um, it goes really well with a lot of the things I've done in my life. I've been able to really use that last name pretty well. Um, but I, I've been doing my own business. I've been kind of in this online space for many years. I was actually a Beachbody coach, a successful one, for five and a half years. I officially oh, walked away from Beachbody last year. That was one of the biggest decisions of my life. It was really hard to walk away from a huge team that I built and a really successful business, but I was called to do something else. I was just feeling very passionate and called to teach entrepreneurs how to build business differently. Um, I felt as though I was always stressed. I was always under anxiety. I was always living out of fear. I was always making decisions that didn't really align with my priorities in life in order to be successful. And I didn't like that about myself. I really didn't love who I had become. And so I went this journey many years ago and started to learn about myself, learn more about who I wanted to be. And in that process, I just really started to gain this clarity and alignment and more flow and ease in my business. And I couldn't help but start teaching other people how to do the same thing. And I started doing it slowly with my team. And then I started kind of branching out and teaching people on different teams and it started to stick and I really started to like it. And then I had to have that really hard conversation with myself as to what I wanted to do next. And um, so I decided to walk away from Beachbody and launch my own business called Soulful Marketing. And it's been a trip. It has been a trip. So um, just like you guys, I'm, I'm in the daily grind. I mean, I'm working to build my business and I absolutely love it. But here's what I've learned along the way is that... Um, it's all, it's all in our minds. Like everything that we achieve or everything we don't achieve, it's all upstairs. Like it's everything is about our mindset. And I know you guys know that. I know how um, important personal development is to all of you. I think that that was the best thing ever that I could have gotten from Beachbody was just 
a perspective shift, a mindset shift, learning about how important it is to continue to grow. Um, so you guys all know that. And I want to, I want to really dig in deep with a lot of that growth stuff and a lot of the energy that kind of surrounds what's happening in your head and how that manifests into the things that come into your life, right? Because we're all familiar with the law of attraction, like attracts like, but how much are we really actually using that in our lives um, is, is what I want to bring to the table today. And that really starts with your limiting beliefs. So the topic of today's call was um, about you know, setting goals and actually hitting goals because there's a difference, right? So we set goals at the beginning of the year or at the beginning of the month or whatever, and we're really gung ho. We're like, hell yeah, I'm going to hit these goals. I'm going to put in the work. I got the plan. I'm ready to go. Two, three days later, we start having these doubts and we start having these fears and we start asking questions like, well, how am I going to do this? This isn't working. Or she's doing this, but I'm not doing this. And what if I did it like this? Or this isn't working, so what if I jumped over here and did this? And we have all of these thoughts, like all of these thoughts that are taking us away from the real thing that we wanna create. And that a lot of times blocks the, the energy of abundance that we wanna bring in with that goal, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I wanna just bring us back though, before we kinda of really jump into all of that good stuff, I just want to kind of ground our energy and just like bring us down. I know it's, it's a later call um, and I know we're winding down. So if everybody can kind of just start to close your eyes and if you can get into a quiet space, I know some of you are with kids, but if you can just kind of ground yourself, ground your feet to the floor, just sit nice and comfortable, sit nice and straight and then close your eyes. We'll just kind of take a few deep breaths and I want you to start to visualize in your mind's eye what the perfect day in the life looks like. Like, what does your perfect day look like? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What are all the things that you're doing, that you're accomplishing? Um, what does your morning look like? What does your afternoon look like? What does your nighttime look like? Just take a second to really sear that into your mind. And take a deep breath and just know that all of that is so possible okay like all of that every single part of that vision is possible and one of the things that I've always done in my life is visualize like I've always had a clear picture of what I wanted to create so as we talk about hitting goals setting goals and hitting goals, I, I think one of the, the main things that we've got to clear up is you've got to be really crystal clear on what you want. So visualizing what you want and picturing that, feeling that, that's part of the law of attraction. How many of you have watched the law of attraction on Netflix or you've, you've kind of heard about it a little bit? If you haven't really dove into that stuff, I would highly recommend watching the law of attraction on Netflix. It's, it's really kind of woo woo and out there. But when I hear stuff like that, like it just, it feels very light. It feels very true. It feels like it just makes sense to me because when you put it out there, right, when you like kind of beam that light of energy, you, you beam out that vision that you want to create higher power, whether you call that the universe, God, source energy, whatever you call that, wants to give you what you want, right? Like whatever you want and whatever you desire, you are worthy of receiving. And your higher power, the universe, God, to me they're interchangeable, is going to give you that. But you have to be really clear on what that is. And the language surrounding that has to also be really clear. Okay, so that's where we're going to get into the limiting beliefs. Because a lot of times when we set a goal, we, we set this goal, we get really excited, but then these doubts, these fears, things start popping into our brain. And we start comparing ourselves to others, or we start to ask the question, how am I going to do all of this? How is this even going to come to me? 
or is this even possible? Can I even achieve this? Am I worthy of achieving this, right? Has anybody ever doubted themselves on the way up to a goal? Like all of us, right? Yes, yes, nobody? No, okay, maybe I'm just alone. Okay, there, okay, I see some heads now. Okay, cool. Um, just wanna make sure you guys will see. So, um, so, right, we all doubt ourselves, but like how do we, how do we move past that doubt? Like that doubt is always gonna be there, but somehow we have to honor that and say, okay, I, I see you, I know why you're there, but you're no longer serving me, right? So we've gotta understand what that is and what that means and why that is there. And then we can say no thank you and move it aside. But if we don't understand why it's there, then it, we just can kind of put a temporary Band-Aid on it, and that Band-Aid falls off. So how many of you um, do affirmations? Like, you know, you talk, like, you, you say things like, I am confident, I am successful, I am debt-free, you know, like things like that. Like an affirmation is an I am. And I think affirmations are great, and they're wonderful, and I believe that they can help in the short term. But if you don't understand the deep rooted limiting beliefs in the first place, affirmations are never going to help you long term. The affirmations come after you've uncovered what those limiting beliefs are, like where those doubts and those fears and that voice inside your head is coming from. Okay, so we've got to like really understand that first. So I'm just going to go back just a second because I just want to make sure I'm covering this all and we're all on the same page. And please ask any questions in the chat if, if you have any. Um, but a limiting belief. So I want to talk about limiting beliefs. And a limiting belief is a belief that you have that's really in your subconscious. Like it's not something that you're really consciously aware of, but it's that, lim it's that belief that holds you back from achieving more. Like for instance, um, you know, like I, I'm not worthy or I didn't, I'm not accomplished unless I get my to-do list done or, um, the limiting belief that, you know, like I can't afford anything or money doesn't grow on trees. So it doesn't come easily to me or the limiting belief that there's not enough room at the top for everybody, right? Like success is only for certain people or there's only room for certain people at the top. Those are all beliefs that are holding us back. Those are all beliefs that literally put a ceiling on top of us, right? And um, it looks like all of us are women on this call. I believe just in general, as females, as women, we have these generational beliefs that put a glass ceiling on top of us. I don't know that it's necessarily society. It probably has been over the years, but we also put those limiting beliefs on ourselves. And I think in order to help the collective female to help us raise the bar and what we are truly worth, we have to do the work ourselves. Like we each have to do the work on ourselves and uncover what those beliefs are to help us rise above. Okay. So we have to understand what is that belief? Like, why do I continue to sabotage myself? Why do I continue to have this behavior that is not in line with where I want to go? Why does this same thing keep happening to me? Can anybody relate? Maybe sort of. Okay. Are we all, are we all on the same page? Like you guys are kind of with me here. You understand where I'm going with all this. Yes. Like limiting beliefs, all that stuff. Okay. Okay. So I want to talk about how we actually figure out what that limiting belief is because so many times we understand the concept that I have these limiting beliefs, but it's like, well, how do I figure them out? Like, I don't know what it is. It's locked inside of me in this treasure cove that I can't figure out how to get to. Like, I can't get that key to unlock what this belief is. So there is actually a way for you to understand what the limiting belief is and to actually really find it. And once we find it and uncover it, then we can create the affirmations and we can create the plan that helps us release it, create a new belief, and then stop the self-sabotage and actually hit the goals that we want to hit. Okay. Amy's with me. She can't even find the key. I feel you, girlfriend. I feel you. So let's talk about there's six steps 
for releasing these limiting beliefs. But we, so it's, it's six steps to uncover the limiting belief and then release them, okay? I'm a steps kind of girl, so I gotta put this in steps. And I am working on a PDF for this, I just didn't get it done, but I'll send it to Lauren and she can share it with you guys after this. So you can have like a workbook and kind of go through this. Okay, so step number one is that you have to understand the language that's going on in your head. So you have to observe, not understand, you have to observe. You have to observe what that spinning wheel is. So what is the constant chatter in your head? Is it about money? Is it about how you look? Is it about your relationships? Is it about your job? What's the constant chatter? Because we always have the constant chatter. We always have that wheel spinning. It's just constantly spinning, constantly spinning, okay? So I want you to start observing it. And observing is much different than judging, okay? We're not judging it, we're just observing it. Because if, if we judge it, then we feel guilty, we feel shameful, we feel unworthy, we feel stupid, we feel all these negative things, and that doesn't help us grow in any way. So we're just observing it. Because as we're gonna find out, those thoughts are there to protect us. Like they're really not there to hurt us, although they are, they're really there to protect us. So if we honor those thoughts and we just observe them, we're gonna be able to move through them, okay? so. First step is to think about the language. So I want you guys, so we're gonna move through this with an example. So I want you to think about a goal that you've recently set in your business. Okay, so I want you to write that goal down. And then for step number one, I want you to think about what is my language around this goal? What's my language? Do I feel like I can hit it? Do I say that I can't hit it? Do I compare myself to others? Do I think it's impossible? Do I think I'm worthy? Like what's the language that's happening every time this goal comes into your head? I want you to write that down, okay? Okay, so step number two is to then observe the action or lack of action <laughs> around that goal or whatever it is. Basically, this is your behavior, like observing your behavior. And again, it's observing, not judging. So it's observing the behavior or lack of behavior, or I'm sorry, lack of action, okay? So like, this can be about anything too. Like, um, for instance, um, like let's say that you're just kind of a little agitated about something and your spouse comes in the house and is super crabby and all you just really need in that moment is just like a little bit of support, a little bit of appreciation, a little bit of love, yet your spouse is super crabby and you know, probably he needs the same thing, but you just take it, you take offense to it, you take offense to his negative energy and it causes a fight and it causes an emotional trigger and you have this behavior that kind of blows up. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. I do that sometimes. And so this behavior comes out of you. That's more in a personal example, but let's say in a business example, like for this goal that you're doing. I've got this goal, I've got this list of things, I've got to contact 30 people, 40 people, whatever, I've got to do this, this, and this to hit this goal, yet, I think I'm just gonna do the laundry or clean my house or like, you know, maybe watch some Netflix or something. Self-sabotage, right? So what's the behavior when it comes to actually taking the action or the lack of action, right? So observing that. So, or you can also like um, say this in a way of like, what's a behavior that you'd like to change, right? So. If you think about a behavior that you currently do, what's one that you would like to change? So observing that particular behavior. Okay, step number three is, this is the most important step, really, is step number three. And that is asking yourself the question, what would I need to believe in order to act that way? Or in order to talk like that to myself? 
what would I need to believe? So, for example, like, let's just go to, um, let's just go to a, a business goal. Okay. So you set, you set an income goal for your business. Let's say that you set a goal to make a thousand dollars in a month. You set this goal and you have a plan of action, but you find yourself not feeling motivated. You find yourself self, self sabotaging and you feel guilty and ashamed and you just really don't feel like this goal is even possible. You don't even feel like anything you're doing is working. You don't feel like your message is getting out there. You don't feel like anybody cares. So you're giving up, I don't know, something along those lines. So as you start to observe your actions, as you start to observe your language, you start to ask yourself this question, what would I need to believe in order to act that way? Okay, so what do I need to believe? Do I need to believe that, you know, what I say, it doesn't matter? Or do I need to believe that, um, you know, that the things that I do um, won't create income or that doing something that I love won't create a steady income for my family or whatever that belief is, right? So there's a lot of things that, that can come up when you ask yourself that question. But I really want you to brainstorm on that question because it takes a little bit of time to kind of pull that out of you, okay? So that question is really like reverse engineering the belief. Like what would I need to believe? And as some of that stuff starts coming up, you can start to correlate that with something that's happened in your past. So that's step number four is what experiences from my past are, have created that belief, have built that belief up within me. Many times it's something to do with what our parents constantly said to us or what a bully said to us at school or a girlfriend or an ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend or whatever, right? Like somebody said something or did something to us that caused us to have this belief that my words don't matter, that I'm stupid, that I'll never make anything of myself. Like that belief somehow still is true deep within you. And in order for you to believe that you're worthy of success and really speak your authentic voice, what Lauren was talking about earlier, is you've got to release that limiting belief that's deep inside of you. Now, we wanna honor that experience, that's the thing. We're, we're honoring all of this, we're not judging any of this. We're saying, okay, like I understand why you're there. I understand that you were there to protect me because basically what happens is you're, you're hurt by that experience and you create this belief to protect you so that it, the hurt doesn't happen again. But what's happening as we've grown and as we do more personal development, we don't need that belief anymore. We don't need that protection. Okay. So as this is step number five, so as the limiting beliefs start to come up, you now know that when doubt creeps in, when fear creeps in, when all of those voices creep in or the self-sabotage creeps in, you can literally say out loud, thank you. I honor that for no longer serving me. Thank you, but thank you. I'm not subscribing to that belief anymore. And then you replace it which is step number six, with your new belief, which is your affirmation that is exactly very specific to that belief that you're trying to release. Okay? Making sense. I, I see a couple of comments here. Okay, so Amy says, so really just trying to recognize it when it comes into our minds. Yeah, so like, um, and I, and I, this stuff just doesn't happen overnight. Like this is really a practice. Like this is something that you're very intentional about, that you practice, um, that, you're, that you're becoming more aware of on a daily basis. Um, yeah, so Amy says, um, just me that says, what makes you think it will work this time? 
yeah, that's a limiting belief. So then you have to ask yourself, like, why would, like, why would I believe that? Why would I believe that I can't make this work? Like, what is it deep inside of me that, that doesn't have confidence in myself to make this work? Like what happened? Like what was said to me? What, what experience did I have that makes me believe that what I do won't work? So really the difference between people, like between you setting your goals and hitting your goals is those limiting beliefs. It's that weight that you carry around. And you know what's funny is that limiting beliefs is LBs. LBs. It's weight. It's heavy fucking weight. Excuse my language, but it's really heavy and it will hold you down and it will hold you back. And if you don't do the work, like you're just, you're, you're, you're not, you're not going to get to where you want to go. Like you're not going to create that dream life. You're not going to create that vision that's on the forefront. Like it, you just won't. You've got to bust through those limiting beliefs. Okay. Is that making sense? We good? Yes. Yes. Okay. So another thing that I want to talk about too is, um, is really just trying to release the how. So a lot of times when we set a goal and we have this aspiration or we have this visualization of our life, we just, we constantly think about, well, how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? How's it going to happen? How, you know, what's the plan? What's the action step? We always want to know the how, and that's just the ego. That's the mind. But when we can release the how, and we can say, I don't need to worry about the how right now. All I need to focus on is putting one foot in front of the other and doing the things that I know how to do, doing the things that I can control. The how will come to you when you just focus on the vision when you put one step in front of the other and do that little bit of work every single day or a lot of bit of work, you know, it's not like you're not working. You're actually doing the work one foot in front of the other, doing the things, you know, you'll be amazed at the how just starts to come to you. Like it literally just starts to come to you. And all of a sudden you just know how to do things and things start lining up. It's incredible, but you cannot worry. You can't have fear or anxiety all the time in the background running behind you of how it's going to happen. You just have to let it happen. Okay. So when I say to release the how it's really not, um, it's not about releasing your intention or releasing your hard work. Um, it's really just about like being open to letting the answers come to you because the answers are all around. The answers are all within you. You just have to be open. And when we have fear, anxiety, doubts, fears, like that just blocks us from hearing that stuff, from tapping into that intuition and being guided by, by ourselves, by our higher power. Yeah, so Renee says, um, I've been working on this for months and it's always a work in progress. Yep, and you've come really far and I just, I feel like, it's, it's an intention. Like you've set this intention to work on your inner self, like really intensely. Right. So, and it doesn't have to be super intense, but it has to be intentional guys. Like you've got to observe and you've got to be aware. And, um, I'll say this, like you also have to slow down a little bit. Like, <sighs> Like this isn't a race, you know, like it's not a race. Like what you are meant to do, you will do if you allow it to come to you. Yes, you have to work really hard, but you have to work really hard. You have to have boundaries. You have to allow yourself to have that space. Like when I think about my business and like where my business used to be, I was like constantly hustling, like, like overwhelming my energy levels. Like I couldn't keep up, but I did it anyways. And a lot of people can do that. A lot of people can't. I was one of those people who could do it, but at some point I burnt out and at some point I needed to change and I needed to do business differently. And I needed to tap into a way where I could still get a lot done, but within boundaries. 
So I like, um, you know, I'm like doing the kitty bowl, you know, where they like put the bumpers up. Like I've got boundaries for myself, you know? Okay. So you just really have to, um, I think really slow down in order to speed up. Mm. You know? Oh my gosh. Yes. Renee, mind your business podcast. So good. James Wedmore, awesome dude. I went to one of his events um, in May of last year. He's incredible. Like he's just got some really, really powerful stuff. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about one more thing because I think it's really important. Remember, um, I do have a limiting beliefs workshop, or not workshop, a workbook for you guys, like a PDF. I'll get it to Lauren tomorrow. It's just not fully done. Um, so I want to talk really quick about choice and obligation okay so um this is something that when i really started to learn about this and hear about this it really hit me hard because again this comes to the language that we're using so everything you do in your life is a choice from building your business to taking care of your kids right like you make a conscious choice to do it but if but many times when we do this thing or when we do the dishes or we take out the garbage or we go to our day jobs, it feels heavy. Like a lot of the things that we do, they feel heavy. We feel like we don't want to do them or that they don't feel very aligned. When something to me feels heavy, it, 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 it feels out of alignment. It feels like an obligation. It feels like one of those, that, that word that I try not to use, which is should feels like I should do it, even though I don't want to do it, right? It's all about this language. But what if we changed how we looked at that thing that we had to do? Because a lot of times we have to do things that maybe we don't always want to do. But instead of feeling obligated to do them, what if we decided that we were making a conscious choice to do it? Like we were saying, okay, like this is a conscious choice. Like today I'm getting up, I'm going to my day job. This is a conscious choice because my day job, it is, is an investment in my business, right? My employer is just paying my bills while I build my business. They're an investor in my business. What if you made that choice instead of felt feeling obligated to go to that job? How much lighter and more freeing does that feel right? So it's really all about shifting the language on how you look at things that are on your list or the things that you, that you want to do or need to do or have to do. It's always a choice. Like everything you do is a choice. So in your day today, um, become more aware and become more present and consciously make a decision. Like I choose to do this. I choose to do this. Okay. So does anybody have any questions? Like anything that you want to unmute yourself or ask? Like I'd be more than happy to discuss, talk, chat, anything at all coming up. Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, if you have nothing, um, I'm going to share a few things more with you. So, um, this really awesome new. Thank you, Lauren. I just put those up about a week ago. I don't know if you can see, but I've got my the phases of the moon. I follow the moon. I really use the moon a lot to help guide me in um, business and my goals and things like that. Yeah. Yes, my moon cycles. Um, so guys, so I'm, I'm doing this new e-course. So part of what I do in my business, um, I have this marketing course called Tribe Marketing. And basically I teach entrepreneurs, network marketers, how to streamline and automate and have more creativity in their business. Um, that's kind of like my higher end, my marketing. That's like the how-to kind of stuff. But what I found after I created this product and got a lot of people in is that we needed more of this foundational stuff. Like I really needed to help entrepreneurs um, release these limiting beliefs and take away this glass ceiling and really help them 
understand how to move into this, this space of, of creativity and this space of limitless power that they knew that they could create anything that they wanted, right? Because we all have that power to do that. So I wanted to teach people like you, women like you, how to do this. So I am working on a new course. It's called A Soulful Business to help entrepreneurs create more alignment, flow, ease in their business, okay? So again, going back to that hustling within boundaries sort of thing. Like we're gonna work really hard, like we're not taking out the hard work, but we're doing it within boundaries and honoring ourselves, honoring our bodies, honoring our priorities, and honoring our family. So Soulful Business goes into beta, on March 19th, meaning that I'm looking for people to test it out. So I need people to do it with me who are willing participants, who are ready to dig in deep with some of their limiting beliefs, and who really want to make major shifts in their mindset, in their life, and in their business. So this will be a six-week course, and when I launch it, it will be a self-study course. But for beta, I need people who will do it with me live, where we have weekly calls just like this, where we talk about things, and it's open for Q&A, and you really get more intimate coaching from me because I need your feedback. So if anybody's interested in joining the beta test group, it is $97, but for you guys, um, I wanted to do a little coupon code for um, Lauren's team. So you get 20%, I'm sorry, $20 off if you want to join the beta group. So we start March 19th, six weeks total, working on things like limiting beliefs, I talk a lot about um, the moon cycles. We're also going to talk about um, daily rituals, like what rituals do I need to have every single day that really set my business up for success, set me up for success. We talk about business systems. We talk about like mindful mornings, all of that thing, all of those things that really just create a more soulful, more aligned business for you. So you guys can go to saratry.com slash soulful, let me just type it in, slash soulful dash business. Oh, I typed that in wrong. Sorry. Let me, oh yeah, that's right. There we go. That's the second one. And make sure to use coupon code, coupon code Duke <laughs> for 20 bucks off. So um, I'd really love to have you in if you're interested in this stuff, if this stuff kind of, you know, really resonates with you. Um, Amy says she's in. Awesome, Amy. Um, so if you're into this kind of stuff, I'd really love to have you. And really, it's just about setting that foundation in your business so that you're not um, so overwhelmed and so anxious and so fearful and so troubled by doubts. It, it, it's really going to allow you to pull out that hidden treasure inside of you. Like what's that thing that you're dying to share? Like what's that authentic voice? What's that light inside of you that just needs to come out, but you're just stuck, you're paralyzed, you can't get it to come. That's really what I, I want to help you with in Soulful Business. So yes, Lauren, that would be so awesome. So they can use that code. Um, we'll keep that coupon code open through Wednesday night, Lauren. So um, please share. They get 20 bucks off with that. And um, yeah. So does anybody have any questions? I mean, I'm here for another, you know, five, 10 minutes if anybody wants to ask any questions at all. Um, or we can wrap it up. <laughs> Anything? Lauren, thank you. This was amazing. Renee, thank you. Renee has been a client of mine for a while now, and um, it's been a pleasure to work with you, and thanks for getting um, me hooked up with Lauren. This has been great. Um, thank you, Sarah, <laughs> for sitting in the dark. Um, and we just got some really bad news, so it was just like the perfect storm. Um, anyway, I, I really appreciate everything you shared. I I like your delivery. It's so calm. It's so nurturing. It's so real. And um, I think that sharing this with um, our team is going to be really beneficial. So thank you so much for sharing with our team. I appreciate it.
Yeah, thank you, hon. I love it, and uh, it's so good to see you. You too. <laughs> Feel better. I hope that I hope I'm that tired three resources. days, and this headache is kicking my tail. Yeah, yeah. Get some rest. Take care of yourself. Oh my goodness, they're multiplying in Renee's head. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I hope you guys have an awesome evening. Thanks, guys. Bye. We'll see you soon. Take care.